This valve right here is the reason why we get such high transmission temperatures in our 10L80 on the 3.0 Duramax diesels. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the factory valve and why I feel like this is a big problem. We're gonna talk about the PPE block. That's a straight through design, which I absolutely love, but there is one little concern that I have with that. And then we're also going to talk about this bypass delete kit right here, which is a, a barbell that's gonna go inside there. Someone actually reached out to me and asked my opinion on this, and I didn't even know this existed. So we're gonna go ahead and take a closer look at this. We will install this in there. We will take this apart, and you can see just how this factory setup works and why I feel like this is such a huge problem. And maybe this is the cause of a lot of the valve body issues because the temperatures are so high. First off, let's talk about this bypass valve. This is the factory one. Obviously this is a brand new one that I bought just for this video. So that way I can show how to install this in there. The valve right there, just bolted up to the side of the engine block down by the oil pan. Now, I also want to point out that there are seals that go to this and here's the part number 85628208. I know a lot of people had a hard time finding these. Those are the part numbers for those seals. They were roughly $5 a piece. What I wanna point out is how this works. So the fluid is going to flow through and it's actually going to just loop back through here and go back through. And going on this way is going to allow it to go to the cooler itself. Fluid actually comes here from the transmission, goes in, loops back to the transmission there. Now when the valve opens, it loops right through or goes right through there and it goes out to the cooler. Now, why would GM block this off so it's not going through the cooler? Well, they don't want the fluid to be too cold and they want the temperatures to actually be high. The reason for the higher temperatures, I believe, is one for fuel efficiency, which we know everything seems to be thinner and higher temperatures for fuel efficiency. Um, the other reason is so that it'll burn off any condensation that's built up into the fluid. Now the issue here is that this valve will open up at 196 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart right now. And so that way we can get a better look at it, but I'm just gonna take off this clip. I'm gonna hold this down because it is spring loaded. Be sure to wear safety glasses. All right, and that's how we take it apart. Now, obviously I don't wanna do this on the truck because there's a cross member in the way, but this is located on the right side of the engine for my 3.0 Duramax diesel. Now you can see the valve assembly here. This is just a traditional wax pellet style thermostat. And pretty much this spring is pushing down on here and that's allowing the fluid to go back up through here, which routes it back into the transmission. So fluid comes in through here and it's just routing back. Now what happens is as the temperature increases, this pin will actually stick out further and further because the wax pellet inside is actually pushing it outward. And what that does is push the valve up. So then it actually seals up right there. It'll fight against the spring and it'll push up against there. So now the fluid is no longer being routed this direction it's actually able to go through to the cooler at that point. The issue that I have with that is the fluid has to travel through this. So there's quite a restriction on there. And the reason why I don't like that this opens at 196 degrees is because if you're towing and you need to go up a big gigantic grade and you're already sitting at 200 degrees, that temp temperature on the transmission is just going to continue to climb. So here in comes the PPE block right here. Now this bypass valve is just a straight through design and there's a couple pros to this that I really like. One, it's a straight through design. So the fluid's going to flow straight through here, right here, straight out to the cooler. The other thing that I like about it, now you can see I've used this before and I took it off during winter time and I'll get into that in just a moment, but it comes with this magnet right here and you can see there's actually debris on there still. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that away right now so that way we can see just how much it actually caught, see that? So the magnet is doing a good job at grabbing debris that is passing through there. So when I installed this, I noticed a 75 degree drop right away. So this block, very well worth it. Probably the best mod you can do in terms of just dropping transmission temperatures. Now the issue that I had on there is when it came to winter time, max temperature that I saw was 120 degrees. Now, I know research has shown that too cold of transmission fluid 
has much less side effect than too hot of transmission fluid, but still too cold has me concerned. And the reason for that is because condensation can build up in the transmission fluid itself, and that's really bad. So that's why you want higher transmission temperatures than 120 degrees, at least if you're in freezing conditions. And this is my opinion based off of my experience. So what we have is a happy medium here, I believe. Now this is a barbell. This was meant for a 10L90 series transmission, which I wanted to give it a try because I'm not familiar with uh, why this would be different for the block off plate. So I have not tested this barbell itself out yet. But what I wanted to do was show that it does actually fit inside there. And I'm gonna go ahead and install this on my truck and we're going to test this in a later video, not in this one. This one's just to explain this. But another pro that I see here is, one, you retain a factory look by using this barbell. The other is as the fluid flows through here, on the PPE version, it actually, provides a tremendous amount of flow and that is fantastic. But I'm wondering if this is in place, this will restrict the flow a little bit. As you can see, this barbell is going to block it. So it's probably cutting down half of the flow through here, which is still better than this one, but it's not completely flow through. So maybe with this valve in place, the barbell, now obviously I have to push it in, but once I push it in, there's no spring on it. so. Um, I don't think it's going to be able to come back out. So I don't want to put that in just yet. But with this barbell in place, I think it's going to block, see it blocks a good chunk of fluid flow through there. So anyway, what I'm talking about here is possibly slowing down the flow. So that way maybe the temperature doesn't get as cold as this. So maybe in the winter time we see some 140s and maybe once towing uh, it'll climb up to the 160 area. I'm unsure, but this is going to be the next test. So that'll be in a future video. In relation to the common problems with these 10L80 transmissions is the valve body issues. So when you're seeing higher temperatures, the fluid degradation is actually more likely than it is at a, like a 160 range. And with fluid degradation, what happens is it starts to discolor and potentially you could cause some scoring within the valve body. The issue comes into play, which I believe there is the scoring in the valve body, which is causing the valves to stick. So I believe this will help my truck in the long term as far as uh, the fluid's going to stay in better shape because it stays cooler, but not too cool. And we're gonna be able to get that condensation out. And then when towing, the transmission temperatures are not going to be way high. Now, the other thing is with the stock valve here, I did notice just off-roading just a little bit when the brand new truck, I was hitting 220 plus with just basic driving around slowly. So this valve right here is going to play a good role in that, I believe, because it's going to allow the fluid to flow through. So we'll test this for the remainder of summertime and then we'll also test it when we get into winter time. So let me know what you think about this. I'll have links to these items down below in the description, but I need to know your comments and uh, your opinions on what you think works best. And I know a lot of people are running this PPE bypass valve and I think this thing is tremendous. It does, it's the best bang for your buck for sure because it's immediate transmission temperature drop. So I love this. Let me know what you've done and uh, till next time, see ya.